Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Life. Today, we're talking about blessings, being blessed of the Lord. Um, I would say everyone would agree that they want to be blessed. Uh, most of the time when we think of the word blessed or blessings, we associate that with favor of receiving good things. And it could be Webster's 1828. Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines blessed as made happy or prosperous, extolled, pronounced happy. This is really just happiness. Um, in Christian circles, we often hear that we should not seek to be happy, that happiness is fleeting, and we are not to do, we are not to do what makes us happy, but rather what makes us holy and what honors the Lord. To which, yes, I would agree to that to a point. Happiness is fleeting, but it's also a God-given emotion, and emotions are not wrong. They're not bad. They're not sin. How we express them, what we do to fulfill them, um, if that's the only thing we're living for, that is bad. But simply being happy, being sad, those are emotions. Those are not sin. Um, happiness does come and go, so we should not live only by those emotions. As Christians, we should have joy, which is part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which we should always have because Christ never changes, and that is where our joy is found, is in the Lord. However, the Bible talks a lot about things we can do to be blessed or happy. God is not against happiness. He's not against this emotion. So, Psalm 1 is um, a very popular psalm. Most of you know it. Uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. The Bible is clear that you will not be blessed or happy if you are doing these things. This is a direct look at the company that you keep. Who is influencing you? Who are you associating with? Who are you modeling your life after? If it's the ungodly, sinners, scornful, judgmental people, you're not going to be happy. Um, this is stressful. This is sad. This, this drags us down and yeah, we can smile and fake happy, but inside we're just, ugh, we're so drained. Um, verse 2 tells us, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. This is where delight is found. This is where that joy and happiness and um, some encouragement is found. Rather than walking in ungodly counsel, standing in the way of sinners and being scornful, we should be meditating on God's word day and night, and finding happiness and delight in it um, and in the Lord himself. You're not going to know the Lord if you don't spend time in his word and time in prayer. That is how we get to know God is by reading his word. It tells us what we need to know about him, who he is, what he wants from us, um, and our relationship together with him. Psalm 84, verse 12, Psalm 34, verse 8, and Jeremiah 17, 7 tell us that we will be blessed if we trust in the Lord. Think about that. Trusting in God brings happiness. We're all trusting in something today. Maybe you're trusting in your job, your health, your finances, um, your savings account, your abilities, your degrees, other people, whatever it is, you are trusting in something. But all of those are gonna fail and we are not gonna be happy. But when we put our trust in the Lord, we're going to find that he's always faithful and we can be happy because he is our sufficiency. There's many other passages that deal with this idea. Um, the Beatitudes goes through this in Matthew chapter 5, um, the Lord starting his Sermon on the Mount. And I want you to remember, like go back and read that, but remember that the Sermon on the Mount was not given to the multitude. He had spoken to the multitude. And then he went up into a mountain, and it was just him and his disciples together. That's who he was preaching the Sermon on the Mount to, were his followers. Those were Christians. Those were his closest inner circle people. Um, but all of these passages are based on salvation and obedience. If we are not trusting God, we are not living according to his word, we're not spending time in his word, or loving people, then we will not be blessed. We will not live happy lives. Um, we know that there's pleasure in sin for a season. It's a season. God is going to end that. Um, we are not going to find deep, prolonged joy and happiness in sin, in living a life apart from God and doing our own thing our way rather than submitting to the Lord. That's, that's not where blessing is found. We must stop expecting to have happiness, joy, peace, and answered prayer when we are so set on living contrary to God and His Word. 
he will correct his children. Just as, um, you know, us as human earthly parents, as we correct our children, our Heavenly Father corrects us because he loves us. Don't wait until he gets your attention through correction to start living as you should. Take heed to his word now. It's never too late. It's never a bad time to repent, to stop and turn from your sin, turn to the Lord and start living the way that he wants you to. We are free to choose our actions. God gave us a free will. We are not free to choose the consequences of those actions. That's that's what the Lord does. Um, so get in the word. Stay close to the shepherd. Let him lead you in paths of righteousness. Study through this word blessed. Remember that it means happy and see what God says. We, we have to live in obedience to him or we're not going to have the happiness, the joy, the peace, any of that that we're looking for. That's We're not going to have that apart from him. So trust him and just it doesn't always have to make sense. We don't always have to know, you know what the outcome is or why God wants us to live this way or do this or do that. Um, but that's where blessing is found. So just trust him. Let him lead.